Hello, my friends. Brett Patterson coming at you from the financial capital of the West, North Salt Lake City. North Salt Lake City. Joined by the chairman, Brian. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Brian. Good for you. I'm doing great. I read an article the other day. Oh. You ready for this article? Yeah. Wall Street Journal. The name of this article was When the Markets Get Scary, Mom and Pop Buy Gold. I want to talk about, we want to talk about gold today. We've got a lot of questions from clients, from friends, mm -hmm. uh, about gold. So we're going to hit gold. Good. And, and here's a statistic for you out of that article as to why we need to address gold. The percentage of Americans who believe gold is the best long-term investment Okay, note the word investment. Mm -hmm. There's the first error. But the percentage of Americans who believe gold is the long, best long-term investment jumped from 26% this year from 15% in 2022. Wow. So gold is gaining in pocket. So it went from 15 to 26. In yep, in one year. Mm -hmm. In contrast, those preferring stocks, this is great dropped from 18% this year from 24% last year. Mm. Gold favorability up, stocks down. Why in the world would that happen? Gold up, stocks down. Why is gold so popular? I, it's uh, fear, you know. I think that's uh, the biggest reason. People, when they get scared, get nervous, they think about gold is a place where their money's gonna be saved. It's gonna hold its value. Yeah. I think that's the belief. Okay, so there's so there's two, let's say two maybe bullets to that word fear. Mm -hmm. The first one is fear of what we've had the last three years of inflation. It's a great inflation hedge, is what I hear on the radio. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, that uh, gold retains its value and it's done that for not only centuries, but for thousands of years. For thousands of years. And it's always been a store of value for thousands of years. Okay, so it hedges against inflation. It's a store of value. When hyperinflation hits, it's going to be that hedge you need in your portfolio to grow your portfolio above and beyond inflation. Right, not okay. inflation, yeah. Second thing is what you said also, with fear is it's it's like an Armageddon strategy. Mm -hmm. The U.S. has a lot of debt. Um, the world reserve currency it's going to lose its status. Uh, there's many wars happening right now. There's hyperinflation. The government's going to start tracking every dollar we make, and where that dollar goes, we need gold. Washington D.C. is a mess. Well, that's true. But all I mean, all, this, <laughs> all of it adds up. Washington D.C. is a mess, but let's let's take this. Let's let's kind of break these into two things, and one is kind of an inflation hedge, or gold is an investment, okay, which is an important term to use. Back in 1971, Nixon, Nixon took us off the gold standard. A lot of gold bugs, we'll call them, people that love gold, talk about that often. In 1980 is when gold really got its popularity as an investment. Because inflation was at 14% and gold hit $800. Gold, everyone was loving gold back then. Yeah. Okay. You, it went up dramatically. I don't know what it, it went to $800 and you meant no one I don't remember what it was. Okay. No. Yeah. I don't remember what it was, but I do know this. Since that time, inflation's gone up four times. Okay. So the value of money's gone down, inflation's gone up four times. Mm -hmm. So if gold is a great inflation hedge, and it was $800 back then to match inflation that's gone up four times. What would be the price that you would need gold to be just to match inflation? Yeah, so if, if something cost 25 cents, it would, today you need a dollar yes. to buy the same amount. So if gold in 1980 is... It was 250 It was, eight, it was $800. So times four, $3,200. You need it to be $3,200 today yeah. an ounce. Right. The price today is $1,988. So it's kept up a little more than half the, you know, the value. I mean, it's, it's, 
yet, or not kept up, but it's, it's it hasn't like, kept anything. Right, it's lagged by so you know. it's not even keeping up with inflation. Right, gold as an investment is done. Here's to further to further give you my um, my rationale for saying gold as an investment is done. Okay. The S&P 500, at the same time gold was 800, in 1980, gold 800, S&P 115. The S&P today is 4238. It's up 38 times, not including dividends, versus gold, yeah. which is up two, two and a half times? Yeah, not, it's not even close. So, the last three years, Last point, and then let's talk gold as an investment. Even more, the last three years, inflation has gone out of control the most since 1980. Okay? If you're saying there's a time for gold, if it is truly an inflation hedge to do well, guess what? It's in the last three years. You would think. You would think. Yeah. Inflation is up in the last three years, 213%. 20-year treasury bonds, I'm throwing this in here, are down 46%. Based on the radio ads that you hear and all these, I don't know, doomsdayers, newsletters, what do you think would be better? If inflation's up 213%, what would do better? Gold or the S&P 500? I'm not asking you because you would know the answer. The S&P 500 in that time frame is up 22.74%. Gold, it's positive. It's up 4.6%. But it hasn't kept up. It hasn't kept up with inflation. And it hasn't kept up with the S&P. Brian, yeah. is gold a good investment? Is it even an inflation hedge? I don't even know that it qualifies as an investment. It's... it's uh, I don't know, it's a hedge, I guess, I guess you could call it, maybe. A hedge against Armageddon, which we'll talk about. Oh, right. But and I don't even know if it's that. Possibly. I mean, it's maybe not the best hedge against Armageddon. It's, it's maybe it's a, an arrow in your quiver, but I wouldn't rely solely on gold to be your, that you're, you're banking on to, to save you or you know, if, if we have Armageddon. So we'll talk about Armageddon in a second, but you were recently reading of Warren Buffett article on gold and he has two piles like which pile do you want pile a or pile b yeah can you can you explain what that is and maybe read a little bit of yeah the so this was an say. article that buffett wrote i think it was in fortune magazine in 2012 so it was after the financial crisis and i think at the time there was another kind of rush to buy gold it was yeah that, that's right after uh the u.s debt was downgraded yeah, at that same time frame, yeah. by the S and P. Yeah. So that it was a topic of conversation like it is right now. In fact, I had I was talking to some customers just a couple days ago, and they're talking about, hey, can you help us buy some gold? And they're, what do you think about gold? And I said, well, I'm the, probably the wrong guy. Maybe I am the right guy to ask. But if you want to hear positive things about buying gold, I'm probably the wrong guy to, to ask. But uh, yeah, Buffett wrote this article in 2012, and I. I just, after I read it, I thought this is a classic, and I, I've saved it. It's been in my files for the last 10, 12, well, over, over a decade ago. And he talks about gold and having two piles or two choices of where you put your money. And uh, he said today, the world's gold, now this was 2012, and so I don't have the, the exact numbers, but back in 2012, there was 170,000 metric tons of gold in the world that had been mined. The, the mined gold was 170 metric tons. Okay. And if you were to melt or melt all of this gold together, okay, I'll put it all together, it would be a cube about the size, about 68 feet per side. So you imagine this, this big cube of gold, yeah. 68 feet tall, 68 feet wide. Okay. And he said it would fit 
comfortably in the infill of a of a baseball diamond. Yeah, right? for sure. That cube of yeah. that cube of gold. It'd be a big cube, but yeah. at the time, gold was selling for about one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars an ounce. Okay, time out. Time out. Two thousand twelve. How much was gold? One thousand seven hundred fifty. Today, nineteen eighty eight. So it's up a couple hundred bucks. It's up. Okay, sorry. I did a little, over, a little over. over 10 percent <laughs> over the last day. So that's about one one and a half percent a year. <laughs> An annualized return of one percent a year. All right. I didn't yeah, sorry to interrupt you, I just thought that was interesting. Go ahead. So if you were to calculate the value at that time, and we could run the numbers on today's, but it's it's not gonna matter. I mean, the concept is what matters. The value of all that gold in the world at that point was nine point six trillion dollars. Okay. That's, that's a, a lot. Of, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Not, not to our, not to the U.S. government, but that's a lot of money to everybody else. Right. Nine point six trillion dollars. Yeah. So let's that's pile A. Okay. Nine point six trillion dollars of this big cube of gold. Okay. So pile A, you can have a big cube of gold that's sitting at your local baseball field. It, you can within drive, its infill. You can drive by it and admire it. And, and what did Buffett say? You can. <laughs> he says, "Well, here's the interesting thing." <laughs> Interesting about gold. Interesting thing about gold is if you buy an ounce of gold today, a hundred years from now, guess what? It's still going to be an ounce. One of gold. ounce of gold. It's it's yeah. not going to change. One ounce of gold is just still going to be an ounce of gold. Sure. Years from now, two which is safe. It holds its value. Right. Yeah. It's it's a piece of gold. Kind it's of a piece of metal, right? Yep. Now let's. Now we have pile B. Okay. Uh, uh, and in uh, pile B. Uh, you could buy with that nine point six trillion dollars. Now this is on 200, 2012 numbers, but it's the concept, not necessarily the numbers. But it, at, at, in two thousand twelve, you could buy all of the U.S. cropland in the U, you know, in the United States, which is which was about four hundred million acres of cropland. Four hundred million acres, and that the output of those four hundred million acres was over $200 billion annually. That was the revenue, the top line revenue. 200 billion. $200 billion okay. annually. I'm sorry, I got this. Um, and plus, after you bought that crop one, you could still buy, at the, at the time, the biggest company in the world was ExxonMobil. Okay, that was the biggest, most profitable company in the world. Yeah. Today, it's Apple. Yeah. Okay, but ExxonMobil back was generating sure. about earning, so these are profits of forty billion dollars annually. Forty billion dollars you know. Okay. And Apple earns more than that annually. Yeah. I mean But how many Exxons could you buy? You could buy sixteen Exxon Mobiles into sixteen of them okay. in two thousand twelve. So the most got, profitable company in the world. You've got so, farmland, two hundred billion annually. You've got which today is probably 16, 400 billion annually. It's 16 exons, is that what it was? 16 exons. Where each exon is 40 billion annually. Annual profits. Annual profits. Okay, keep going. So I'm just adding this up. So what's 40 times 16? A lot of money. Yeah, we're talking uh, a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> So after you purchased all that money, you would all those assets, 16 Exxons and all the cropland in the U.S., you would still have a trillion dollars left over for pocket change. And then you put that in your pocket. You still have a trillion dollars left over. Go to the mall. Now, my question to you, Katie, is, or our listeners out there, what would you rather own? What would you rather buy? So you've got pile A gold, what you have is what you're gonna get. An ounce today is an ounce tomorrow in a hundred years. You're right. Or you have pile B. This beautiful, are, listen, you're forgetting this beautiful gold cube, 68 feet wide, 68 feet tall. It's shiny. Shiny, like beautiful. You, know, shiny. you can go by and, and you know, sleep on it. That would be kind of cool, sleeping on gold. Yeah, that would be pretty, <laughs> That'd be pretty, pretty cool. That would be kind of cool. Or pile B, you can have these assets that produce Billions and not, of billions. Not only do they produce billions, but they will generate. They will likely produce many more billions over the decades, over the next hundred years. Hundred years from now, you'll still have that sixty-eight foot cube of gold. 
100 years from now, imagine the value of all the cropland in the U.S., all the 16 Exxon Mobiles. Okay, so. So what would you choose? Pile A or Pile B? Yeah, what would you She's looking at us like we're smoking crack. And of course, what do you, Pile A? No? Pile B, okay, good. Pile B. We, we've taught her that, that Pile B and just the numbers that we have shared about the return of gold and the return of real assets, right? And we say real assets, we're talking stocks specifically, but you could attach real estate, you could attach farmland, you could attach- a business. I mean, business. Um, you know, you could attach any, any other real asset that produces earnings and it would be a better investment than gold. It's, you want to buy producing assets. I mean, that, that's yes. really the story here is you have this asset in gold, and okay, we'll call it an asset, that's not gonna ever change. It's always gonna be that 68 foot cube, or you're gonna buy an asset that's producing revenue, that's producing something. Yeah. And, and that's really, this, really the moral of the story is you wanna buy on and own a producing asset. That's how you fight inflation, the effects of inflation, and maintain your purchasing power, and even more so. I mean, look at what the S&P's done over that time frame we you referenced there, Jeez. up uh, what you said thirty eight times, 30, not including 30, dividends. So 38, 38 x yeah, you know, 30, versus versus two and a half, right? Not even which in inflation was over four times. Yeah, over that time is inflation is gold an investment, Brian? I, I, def, I guess it depends on how you define investment. I mean, it's. Uh, you could say it's an investment. I think a lot of people would put the gold as a, but is it a great investment? I don't think so. I, th I think if you do classify it as an investment, which I personally don't, uh, that's just me, then it's a very poor investment compared to other investments you could make. I think there's a lot of better choices out there. Than just buying, based on history. Than buying gold. I mean, buy a producing asset, buy real estate, buy an apartment so, complex, buy a business. That's how you maintain your purchasing power. Gold, I think, is a poor uh, tool to, to do that. So that's how you maintain your purchasing power, build your wealth to ultimately accomplish whatever goals you have is through another asset, right. not gold. Now gold, let's move, let's move to number two, which is, we talk about number one, it being an investment, not really, it's, it's a, clearly it's a very, very poor inflation edge. That's for dang sure. But the second thing is an Armageddon strategy. And I say Armageddon strategy, a better way that most people would talk about is, is there's just a lot of fear in the world. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's government debt, there's wars, there's a Federal Reserve that's out of control. There's government that's out of control. I mean, all these things that create fear in that, what if the world currency, the, the US loses its world reserve currency status? What if we're in bank? But what if- That's not gonna happen in our lifetime. So, okay, so let's talk about Armageddon. What's the likelihood of the scenario of losing our world reserve currency status? Um, to what? To who? To what? I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. It's going to be China. That's what I hear. It's going to be China. China. Russia. China or Russia. What, what currency? The euro? Um, Come on. Paraguay? Okay. Maybe? Give me some. Give me some. Give me, give, me, <laughs> give me a good option here. I don't know. There's okay. not. So, it's, it's a terrible argument. But I know. We're, we're going to play the argument. It's stupid. Okay. What's the probability that just all hell breaks loose and we're defending our homes from war and Armageddon comes and the U.S. is no more? Like, what, what's the probability of that happening? I mean, it's impossible to know what the probability is. I, I, let's say on the high side, half percent? I mean... <laughs> It's, I mean, I, I, I think it's impossible to know, but okay. but it doesn't matter, right? Because... Well, it does matter to people that are nervous about it. Well, I know I'm not saying that. I mean, yeah, it, it does matter, but the probability, knowing okay. the probability doesn't matter. So, so I would say knowing the probability does matter, and here's why. Okay. 
if somebody goes with Spencer and Matthew and they build a financial plan, okay, and that financial plan, if I do X, Y, and Z, I'm going to have a 95% probability of accomplishing my financial goals over the next 30 years, okay? Um, that's a high probability. Right. Now, if I take $50,000 or $100,000 from that plan to buy gold, well, my probability goes from 95 to say 70 because I'm scared of, a, of an event, Armageddon, that maybe has a 2% probability. So you've taken your financial goal probability from 95 to 70 to, to ensure or hedge a 1% or 2% probability. Yeah. Like, is that smart? And I agree with you, with your logic there. I, I think what I'm saying when it doesn't matter, meaning if we get to that point, owning gold or it just, it doesn't matter at that point. I mean, at that point, I think, so what do you, what do you, what, uh, here's a, here's a, just a, a thought and I'll ask you, how do you prepare for Armageddon? If it's not buying gold, what do you, what do you do to prepare for that extreme scenario where yeah. We, we lose, the U.S. loses the world reserve currency. Guess what? If that's the case, if that happens, what I mean is it doesn't matter. We're, we're in such a bad shape that well, I think what does matter is you're out of debt. You have food storage. <laughs> you're one of these preppers. Okay. There's a small part of me that kind of is a prepper. Yeah. And guess how much gold I own? I don't know many. But I, I think... Food, water, shelter. Shelter and a way to defend your family. And, That's and all a, you need. And a, re a reliable source of food, a food source, yeah. and a reliable source of water. We are and shelters, bro. Yeah, they, I mean, <laughs> that's, if you're asking me what, what you should be doing to oh, prepare man. for this Armageddon, okay. that's what you should be doing. I, I'm not sure gold is gonna have all that much value if we're to that point. If, it, if it's, uh, um, you know the Terminator and, and the U.S. You know we're and the U.S. is being taken over by aliens. Uh, I'm, not me, I'm, not you. <laughs> I'm not sure. You know people are going to be trading gold. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing. But 100% agree. Like I have silver that I inherited from my grandpa Sark. Right. He's a depression raised kid. I have silver. That's what I have. I have some gold coins and some coins that I inherited from my from your depression era yeah. great grandma. So yeah. so here's here's the thing. When is it when is it appropriate for someone to buy gold? I think if somebody has a probability of 95% to accomplish their financial goals, okay? And they have they can peel off 20, 30, 50, 100 grand from their financial plan. Or it's, it's all relative. It's, it's all relative it's, to them. It's relative to yes. the, your, it's a percentage, whether if, it's two or three percent. If they can pull two or three percent or whatever right. from their financial plan and not impact that financial plan, meaning the probabilities are that you're gonna need that financial plan and, and its investments more than you would need gold. So if you can peel two or three percent away or five percent, whatever that percent is, and not impact your financial plan to buy gold to feel better and sleep at night, go for it. Right. But if you if you invest, if you think gold's an investment to help you accomplish your financial goals, you're wrong. It's not. I hundred percent agree. So use the money that doesn't impact your plan. Don't don't rely on gold to help you accomplish your financial goals. You, it's gold is a it's it, you know it's a hedge and mm -hmm. that if that you can fall back on possibly uh, which I think is unlikely but uh, if yeah. that helps you sleep better at night great but I I don't think it should be part of your plan to help you accomplish your goal to you can't you can't rely on gold to earn ten percent a year I just you just can't do it no no we have many clients to where we've talked about this by the way and they have carved off money to buy gold. And that's great because they're not impacting their long-term financial plan and they're still able to sleep at night with gold.
You know what I feel like, Ryan? I feel like the next time we record a podcast about gold, that we should wear helmets and have our ARs. <laughs> <laughs> like a prepper podcast. Can you talk like Arnold more? Or all this Come and get out my hair! <laughs> Sure, sure. Because What's the summary of this whole conversation? Is gold a good investment strategy? Right? No. No. It's not. It doesn't keep up with inflation. It is a invest if you have extra cash and you need gold in your safe to sleep good. And you don't need it to help you accomplish your, your goals. Your goals, your financial goals. Amen, brother. Yeah. I think we, we agree on this. Yes. Okay. We agree. We agree. Although I still think we should wear helmets next time. <laughs> we can do that. All right. I hope this helps. This conversation helps. I know there's many of you that, that have talked to us about gold and, and you listen to your favorite radio show and all you hear is move your IRA into gold and do this with gold. And if you don't have gold, you're susceptible to the, you know, this, that, and the other. Well, if that's a concern, talk to us about it. And let us build a financial plan, and then we'll see if we can carve off gold. Just remember, these guys are selling gold. <laughs> it's like an annuity. Like, they're meant to be sold, yeah. not purchased. Right, yeah. It's, they're definitely selling, you know, they're selling a product. Yeah. And they just, they take the offer. Anytime there's a lot of fear or, you know, something like that, all of a sudden these commercials, doom and gloom. Look what it's done. Favorability has gone from 15 to 22% a year with gold. Yeah. It's more so than stocks. Like Their advertising is working. And Good really, thing they got us. They're passionate on owning stocks, too. They got us and they got Arnold to help them <laughs> understand what to do. Anyway, until next time, everybody. Bye now.